Welcome Vault Dwellers, my name is Nacho Bedness, and we are continuing my series today on player vending. It's been out for two or three months now. It's been long enough that I think we can make some observations on what does work and what does not work when it comes to running a business in the Fallout world. Last video was picking a good location for your store. This video we're going to talk about what it is that I think we should be selling. I'm very curious about your thoughts, so leave a comment down below if you agree or especially if you disagree with any of my conclusions here. So let's start off with things that I think you should not be wasting your time and your precious inventory space on. First off, I think that power armor is just a bad seller. And that's largely because of the UI here. Let's take a look at this piece that I have put in at a ridiculous price because I didn't want anybody to actually buy the thing while I was recording this video. But let, let's look at this. We can see the stat lines, but there's no indication what mods may or may not be on this piece of power armor. If I had put a very expensive and hard to make jetpack modification on this piece of power armor, I would expect to sell it for a much higher price. And given the extreme weight ratio of ratio of weight to value when it comes to these things, I think they're just a non-starter. They are hard to get players to get to look at them, they weigh a lot, and ultimately you can't sell them for what they are worth. I talked in detail in my Is It Worth It video about the Power Armor modification plans, and this UI makes it all the more apparent that you're not going to be able to run a business by modifying Power Armor and selling it to other players. Next thing that I don't think sells very well are serums. I had big hopes for buying serum recipes and essentially making my money back and then turning a profit by selling serums to other players. In practice, market forces have continued to drive serum prices down. The average price that I see from other players is somewhere around three to four hundred caps and at that price it is going to take a lot of serums to make back the 17,500 caps that it takes to buy the recipe. Furthermore, the serums themselves do require a great deal of resources to build, including flux. Every serum requires at least one flux to make, and in my mind, that makes them essentially no good for trying to sell to other players. You are not going to make your time or money back by selling serums to other players, in my opinion. Another thing that I think doesn't do well is non-legendary weapons and armor. Most players, when they come to your camp, are going to be looking for legendaries. And if it's not legendary, I don't think that they are even going to take a look at what it actually is that you're offering to them. Let me show you some examples that have been just taking up space in my inventory for several weeks now. Um, this, uh, this bladed baseball bat is something that I made um, largely in, to complete some quests or, or objectives to get atoms. 
But it is still a pretty good baseball bat for a low-level player, and at 65 caps, it's at a bargain price. No one has has bought it. It, it has been in my inventory for quite some time. The Cultist Dagger is not a great weapon, but it is fairly rare. And at 10 caps, you would expect it to sell. It hasn't. Um, the uh, This is a very powerful sniper rifle that is probably better than a lot of the non-legendary weapons in the game, and yet here it sits. So, even if it is really good, I don't think that you're going to have much success selling weapons and armor that are not legendary. Now, on the flip side of that coin, good legendaries do sell. Now, I'm not talking about crappy ones. You'll never be able to get rid of that stupid hunter's golf club that you got off of a ghoul at the White Springs, right? It's just, it's not going to happen. No player wants to waste any time or money on that. If you sell it low enough for maybe 50 or 100 caps, you might get someone who will buy it just to turn it in for scrip at the leg legendary uh, trader machines. But otherwise, you're just not going to sell crappy legendaries. Good legendaries, on the other hand, like this armor-piercing sniper rifle, I fully expect that this is going to sell in the near future. Um, if it is an effect that you want for your character, or you could see another player wanting for their character, it will probably sell. If you look at that and say, like, there's no way in a million years that I'm going to use this, and even my buddy who's a melee build, who's, you know, I'm not, even that guy is going to turn up his nose at this thing, you're not going to sell that legendary. At least you're not going to sell it at a, uh, at a high price. Also, another thing that I think that sells good is weird and unique items. An example that I will show you here is this perfectly preserved pie. Now I happen to know a 100% guaranteed spawn point for perfectly preserved pie. And it takes me about three minutes to get it. And yet, I put this in my vending machine at 225 caps, and this will sell. I have sold numerous copies of this perfectly preserved pie, and typically, I, I'm out at the moment, but I will typically um, have two or three in reserve. For some reason, just because it's weird and unusual, and probably because players think the only way to get it is out of the vending machine, people will buy this. Other weird and unique items that often sell well, I know a guaranteed spawn for the skull bandana, and that always sells. This skiing purple and white outfit looks ridiculous. I never see anybody actually wearing it, and yet people will always buy it. Uh, Any time that someone does buy it, somewhere I picked up the plans for that thing. And so I can just make more. And so for a, uh, a, a couple of cloth and a rubber, I can get 15 caps, which is more than I'd be able to make selling those resources in and of themselves. So if you find things that are kind of a little rare in the world, even if you wouldn't necessarily make a lot by selling to a robot vendor, you might make a lot more selling to another player. Other good examples are the Halloween costumes. I know that there are plans out there to make those, and if you have those plans, make some up and put them in your vending machine. Just don't put 20 copies in there 
because then it gives it away, right? That it's not really weird or unique, and those players are, instead of going to buy from you, are going to go say, huh, I wonder where this person managed to get so many copies of this particular item that I thought was strange. Another thing that sells pretty well, and I'm currently actually almost out of because I've sold them all, is modified Under Armour. Now, even though it's hard to get people to look at things that are not legendary if they do take the time to look. For example, this resistant Vault 76 jumpsuit. This doesn't. Re this version of the jumpsuit does not require any flux to build. It only requires some ballistic fiber and some gold. I think are the only rare components and. I will sell this for more than those components are worth. Any smart player who is actually looking at these things is going to see that this is worth a total of four special points, which is a fairly powerful item to have. So uh, even if you don't necessarily know the mods for the vault jumpsuits, you probably, whether you realize it or not, have picked up some plans to modify things like road leathers or uh, flannel shirts or what have you. So take a look at modifying some Under Armour and putting it in your vending machines. Last topic to cover is ammo. I frankly don't know if ammo sells well. For myself, I always tend to make my own, but that's just me. I see a lot of players with a lot of ammo in their vending machines. I don't know if that means that it's selling well and they're putting those those that ammo back in or if it never sells and that's why it's always showing up in players vending machines I'm interested in your thoughts leave me a comment below and that is enough for today next time we're going to talk about how I think that we should be setting our prices so if you're not subscribed subscribe so that you can see that if you liked the video, hit the like button. If you didn't like, please tell me why in the comments so that I can try and do better for you next time. Until next time, my name is Nacho Bidness, and I'm saying it's a great big wasteland out there. Let's go have fun in it.